Now at this point, members of the jury, uh, the parties, if they choose, can make an opening statement. State, do you wish to make an opening statement at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You may do so. Thank you. First, let me wish everyone a good morning. Um, first, uh, I want to promise you that this opening statement will not be as long as the opening statement that I gave during the uh, first part of, the, uh, of this trial. Um, as the uh, judge explained, the, the opening statements uh, in this part of the trial, or for that matter, in the first part of the trial, are designed to give the attorneys a chance to tell you what they expect the evidence will be during the penalty phase, this phase of the trial. But in the penalty phase of a capital proceeding, uh, it gets a, a little bit uh, awkward. And the reason why I say that, that it's awkward is because with respect to the aggravating and mitigating circumstances only, you are allowed to consider and should consider uh, the evidence that's have the evidence that has already been presented to you in the first part of the trial. Uh, so that's something that you may consider, what's already been presented to you. So, you know, the, the reason why I say it gets a little bit awkward is because the purpose of the opening statement is to tell you what they expect the evidence is going to be in the penalty phase, but yet you've actually already seen a good part of that evidence which was presented to you during the, the first part of the trial. The two aggravating factors that the state is relying upon and that I will talk about uh, in this opening statement has already been presented to you during the first part of the trial. And let me tell you what those two aggravating factors are. The first aggravating factor is that Grant Amato was previously convicted of a capital felony. The judge, I expect, is going to tell you that first degree murder is a capital felony. Now, I'm going to talk about more about that particular aggravating factor uh, during the closing arguments of this particular penalty phase, but let me explain what I mean when I say that the aggravating factor that Grant of Amato was previously convicted of a capital felony, let me explain what I mean by that. With respect to each conviction, remember he's convicted of three counts of first degree murder. With respect to each conviction for first degree premeditated murder, you are allowed to consider the other two convictions of first degree premeditated murder as a previous conviction for a capital felony. Now, I'm going to talk much more about that during the closing uh, arguments part of this phase, but uh, please understand that, that with respect to each individual conviction for first-degree premeditated murder, you are allowed to consider the two other convictions of first-degree premeditated murder as a, as a, pre a previous conviction for a capital offense. The next aggravating factor that the prosecution is rel relying upon is what is called the cold, calculated, and premeditated. Namely, and once again, the judge will instruct you on this, is that the first degree murder was committed in a cold, calculated, and premeditated manner without any pretense of moral or legal justification. Now, the judge is going to instruct you what cold is, and I'm going to talk much more about that during the closing arguments. The judge is going to instruct you what calculated is, and once again, I'm going to talk about that during the closing arguments uh, part of this uh, phase. 
and the judge is going to instruct you what premeditated is. And again, I'm going to uh, talk much more about that during closing arguments. Now, basically, the premeditation is exactly as the judge described it during the first part of the trial, with an additional requirement, namely that there's a heightened level of premeditation. And, and, and I'm going to talk more about that during closing arguments. The judge will also explain to you what a pretense of moral or legal justification is. Remember, the aggravating factor is that the murder was committed in a cold, calculated, or premeditated manner without uh, any pretense of moral or legal justification. Uh, I'm going to talk about that also, uh, what a pretense of moral or legal justification is. And you'll see in this case there is absolutely none. Now, I also expect that you're going to hear testimony from uh, Jason Amato, uh, that he's going to read to you what is called a victim impact statement. Uh, you're going to hear testimony from Christopher Sisko and from Sloan Young. All three of these witnesses testified in the first part uh, of the uh, trial and will be testifying in this part of the trial as what is called a victim impact witness. Now, please understand, and the judge is going to instruct you on this, is that you may not consider uh, that testimony as an aggravating factor, that you're strictly limited to the two aggravating factors uh, that I expect you'll be instructed on. Uh, but the victim impact evidence is something that you should consider, and it's something that you could, should consider to show uh, the uniqueness of each particular victim in this case, uh, Margaret Amato, Chad Amato, and Cody Amato, their, their uniqueness as individuals and how their loss affected family and friends and how their loss impacted the lives of the family and friends. Now, it's also critical to uh, remember, and this is something that we discussed uh, during the jury selection process uh, part of this trial. It's something that the judge will instruct you on, and it's certainly something that I'm going to also uh, talk about during closing arguments. Uh, but it's, all, it, it's important to remember uh, that your consideration of the aggravating and mitigating circumstance is, is not a mathematical calculation. It's not a, a process by which you add um, the number of aggravating factors that you find, and then you add the number of mitigating circumstances that you may find, and then uh, decide based upon who has the highest number who wins. It's not that type of process. It's the quality of the aggravating circumstances that are presented to you. It's the quality of any mitigating circumstances that's presented to you, and then you weigh that. And the example that I gave during jury selection is one feather, or one rock certainly outweighs 10 feathers. So it's the quality of the circumstances that, are, that's, that you need to consider, and not the number. It's not a mathematical calculation process. In this case, when you consider the enormity of the aggravating factors, and that's the theme that I want to present to you, the, the enormity of what occurred in this case. And I'll be talking much more about that in closing arguments. But when you consider the enormity of what occurred in this case, when compared to the mitigating circumstances, that you'll see that, that this case is one of the most aggravated and least mitigated cases that is presented. That the appropriate sentence uh, in this case is the imposition of the death penalty. Now, it's not easy to vote for the death penalty, and I'm going to talk about that during closing arguments. But consider the enormity of what the defendant did in this case. 
Please consider that when you have to make your decision whether or not to vote for the death penalty. Please consider the, the brutality, once again, the enormity of the crimes the de defendant committed in this case when you need to make that choice. As difficult as the decision is to impose the death penalty, as difficult as that decision may be to some of you, when you consider the enormity and the brutality of the crimes that the defendant committed in this case, the question is not whether the death penalty is required. It's never required. The question is whether or not you should vote for the death penalty because it's the appropriate sentence. When you consider the brutality and the enormity of what occurred uh, in this case, I respectfully submit to you that the appropriate sentence, the sentence that you should vote in this case, as difficult as it may be, is the death penalty. Thank you very much. Does the defense wish to make an opening statement? I 